Ah, welcome back, Coinaholics, to Blue Ridge Silverhound. Of course, the mad scientist is back at it again, you know, trying to find uh, and uh, research some great coin videos for you. So if you're into coins, currency, finding various treasures and pocket change, then this channel might be for you. So I want to thank everyone for all the views. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button, share, subscribe, and comment away. All right, enjoy. Greetings, fellow coinaholics. Of course, we're back with something else new. And I don't know why, but I've been on this, this nickel kick recently. Uh, you know, between Jefferson Nichols and Buffalo Nichols, I have been all about nickels this month. It's crazy because that's all I've been getting, you know, coin roll hunting wise. But anyways, that's a story for a different week. And of course, you're here to talk about well, you're not here to talk about. I'm here to talk about, and uh, it's up to you to respond in, um, you know, let me know what you think. But there is one specific date of coin, okay, within the last 100 plus years that I feel, okay, this is all my opinion, that I feel is, um, is a coin that I believe is going to wake up, all right? It's a coin that is tremendously undervalued, compared to some of the other coins that exist out there. And this is why I feel like now is a good time to jump on the, I gotta find it here. <laughs> the 1938 D Buffalo nickel train, woo -hoo! Oh, all aboard, probably one of the easiest to access coins in really nice condition. I, I tell you what, this coin right here is what got me into nickel collecting in the first place, okay? Um, some would say that, you know, Buffalo nickels are absolutely beautiful. They are extremely popular in today's collecting landscape. No doubt about it. It's one of the top five most widely collected, most uh, people are paying an absolute ridiculous amount of money for some of these coins in the highest condition and the good old 1938 d the final date of the buffalo nickel of course it's the first date of the jefferson you know of the same date and what exactly is missing from this okay well let's, let's start out with some numbers it's important to see the number figure of it. So we got the Red Book price guide. This is an old one, 2012 or whatever, but same information. Take a look at the 37D, okay, the year before. 17.8 million, 38, just a shade over 7 million. But look at the price valuation, all right? It's almost the same all the way across, okay, it, it jumps up quite a bit, right, you know, right from the get-go. Uh, of course, this is a printed price guide. Take no stock in printed price guides. Would anyone pay $3.50 for a good? I mean, seriously, come on. Come on, people. Come on. I digress. But if you follow all the way along, okay, you get to see kind of this inversion here where the AU50 3070D is worth more than the 38D and then so on. $35 here, $22 here, $45 here in mid state 63 and $36. Uh, is it just me or is does this seem kind of backwards based off of the vintage figures? Well, what people did in 1938 might actually help out collectors today, okay? Blue Ridge, Sean, what are you talking about, brother? I, I think you've been, um, yeah, you've been partaking too much of the wacky sauce. Yeah, I might have been, I don't know. But see this example right here in BU condition. This is what would be considered an atypical Men's State 63 or even 64 example, uh, you know? Tiny little carbon spot aside, this is a coin right here that, as the printed price guide suggests, is worth about $36, $35, whereas a 37D of the same type is $45-ish. Now, in the real world, those numbers don't translate, okay? Everything revolves in real time. That's why eBay is a much more suitable 
pricing calculator for a lot of these coins, but I've, I've done my research and it, by golly, they're all similar. So this coin right here with a smaller mintage, by the way, the 1936 has a mintage of 118 million, nearly 119 million. In grades of mint state 63, it's $40. Okay. I, I will walk over a 1936 on the ground just so I could get this 1938 sitting a few feet down. So this date was plagued in a much similar fashion as the 1950D. You guys know it as being the consummate key date of the Jefferson Nickel series. Okay, what did everybody do? Let's think about it. Okay, it's, it's printed all over media, it's online. And so some of you already know it. People knew and foresaw and they could foretell the future of it being a key date, okay? The U.S. Mint released figures indicating as such, all right? There's only a couple million pieces of the 1950D produced. However, there's a reason why that there are a ton of them in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition, okay? Is that they were hoarded right out of the bank. Brand spanking new, Fed Reserve dropped it off, or an armored car company, and people were coming in buying full rolls. Which is why a lot of them are in existence in BU condition and are worth considerably less compared to some other dates around it where they were just strictly sent out in the circulation and they were beat up and they were used. Okay, the 1938D, again, along the same trajectory as that 1950D. I paid... $25 for this coin at a show last year. This coin might be familiar to you because I did talk about this in a previous video of new acquisitions, but it's relevant to this video, okay? And it's gonna get even better. So you see this one here that is, you know, let's say, let's say for argument's sake that it's a mint state 65, all right? So $25 is what I paid for that. Now check out this 36S in comparison. Also, you guys have seen this coin. This is going to be a future NGC slabbed example. I'm hoping it'll be either a 65 or a 66. So this coin right here in Mint State 63, according to the Red Book price guide, is $45. However, this coin I paid $135 for, right? That's pretty crazy. Comparison-wise... Okay, the coin on the left, the 38D, is stunning. It's a nice mint state example, and so is the 36. This one looks better, okay? It's got more luster. Um, but if the shoe were on the other foot, you know, it's like, oh, I have this 36S priced out in a, you know, in a case at a coin show for $150, and then you have this one for the 38D for $25, and let's say for argument's sake that you wanted or just needed a type coin for your collection. I just want a, an example of a really nice BU uncirculated Buffalo nickel, okay? I would say, you know, a, a good majority of the folks out there, based off of common sense, would gravitate towards a 38D, okay? That, that's perfect. So that's a BU example. Now these right here, I got out of bulk Buffalo nickel lots, okay, to the tune of 50 cents a piece, 38 Ds. The coin on the left here obviously has some condition issues. The one on the right is just an honest Abe fine-ish coin, all right? But, uh, and to, 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 to reiterate, there was no Philadelphia examples minted for 38, so it's almost like a one-year type. It, it's, it's an interesting year. But coins like this generally can be found, you know, if you have a really nice coin coin shop nearby or if you go to the coin show, these are available for pitlins, okay? These would be sitting around with a bunch of other, other circulated 36s, 37s, 35s. The 38 has always been a coin that people regarded as something a little bit extraordinary because it is indeed the last date of the Buffalo Nickel. All right, so that's how much these are. Do I anticipate these 
going scarce anytime soon in those nickel lots? No, these will always be available for about 50 cents to a dollar. This coin right here, I've shown on a previous video as one I cherry picked out of a batch of Buffalo nickels in which I paid 50 cents a piece for that actually has a pretty neat repunch midmark variety. Okay, so there is actually two D's in there. One, you know, is slightly west of the primary mint mark. But this coin right here that I cherry picked for 50 cents is worth about five bucks. Okay, so that there's the cherry picking angle of it. You know, you could always find something where you paid the market value of a coin and then turn around and you could monetize off of it by selling it for five, six, seven dollars. Okay, they're very collectible. Okay, albeit people have been searching 30 AD nickels, uh, Buffalo nickels for a while. So they know about the D over S, the myriad of various D over D repunchment marks. So this is a fantastic coin to cherry pick on the cheap. Okay, you want something that's going to give you a thrill that's not a Jefferson nickel? Check out the 38 D um, Buffalo. And finally, you want to know where it's like criminally cheap to buy these? Slab. Check out this original green holder, 1938 D, Mint State 66, which, by the way, it's undergraded. <laughs> I can tell you that much. This is a 67 coin all day long. That's what I love about original green holders, baby, is that they were extremely strict on grade back in the 1980s. And guess what? Guess who's the beneficiary? The collecting public in 2019. I paid $79 for a mid-state freaking 66 38D Buffalo. Which, by the way, here, here's the sad part. That is the market value. As a matter of fact, I probably paid just a hair above that. Now, where's that other coin? The 36. Okay, let, let, let's let's take a look at this little example. Okay, you walk you walk next to a coin coin dealer's little case and you see the 36 S non-graded for $150. And then you see this coin here. PCGS plastic, original green holder, already graded Mint State 66. There's no guarantee that this one will be a 66. What if it's a 65? You would barely break even, you know, except for the gas that you use to get to the thing. Holdered, Mint State 66 Buffalo, original green holder, looks absolutely stunning. It's, it's, you know, like my first girlfriend, you know, wearing lingerie for the first time. It's amazing. It is. Wow. Yeah. And that, that that's where it is just absolutely highway robbery that these things are this cheap. And guess what? It's not going to stay like that. Give it 10 years. And this, this coin will double in value at this grade level because they're all going to be dried up. With, with a mintage of a paltry mintage of 7 million coins, one of the top five most popular collected series ever in U.S. coins. And what happens if the government decides, you know what, we're going to do away with the penny, and we might even do something with a nickel where that even gets cut down. Okay, what is that going to do to the collectability of all the older coins? Well, my friend, it's going to shoot up. Woo! <sighs> Anyways, I'm very passionate about 38 D's, as you can tell. And, um, yeah, are you kidding me? $80 for this. There was a mint, there were other Mint State 66s on Northeast Newman's Mag site a few weeks ago that were $49.99, $59.99. I happen to pick the best one because it has the most best eye appeal for what I'm looking for. And it, it is most impactful for this video. I'm telling you, 1938 Buffalo Nickels are by far and away the biggest bargain. Okay, so what are you waiting for?